It's true that Gord Watson kept an old school bus parked behind his house. He used to be a school bus driver after all. And it's true that he kept chickens. He did live on a farm after all. And it's also true that he kept his chickens inside of that school bus. Now, everything that happened after that, you know, the part about the chickens, you know, learning to drive and learning to read and going on great adventures, that might be a bit of a stretch of the truth. And that is today's storytelling tip. Take the truth and stretch it. I'm Nicole from Arts Place, and this is your storytelling video. Now, by take the truth and stretch it, I mean, look around at the truth of your regular life. Life is filled with the absurd and the wonderful. And use these strange and wonderful things you see around you as like a spark for your imagination and then stretch it out to make a fun and creative story. Now it's true that Gord Watson had strung a phone book up from a rope on the inside of the chicken bus. Now for those of us who grew up in the age of cell phones and Wi-Fi, a phone book was an actual paper book, very, very thick, that was delivered to everybody's home every year. And it contained all of the phone numbers of everybody who lived in town, plus all of the businesses. And it was a mostly unused object that lived in dusty corners of people's kitchens, or was sometimes used to prop up a wobbly leg of a table. Uh, but it was only really useful if you wanted to order a pizza. In which case, you flipped to the yellow pages, you could see all of the pizza parlors all across town listed there, and you could order yourself some nice dinner. Now, Gord Watson, not being partial to pizza, saw that this, the phone book could be used for other purposes. In the chicken school bus, chickens, you know, they really like to peck things. And if they don't have something fun to peck at, they'll peck at each other. So they use the phone book on a rope as a kind of a game piece, and they packed it back and forth all day long. Brilliant. Now, there happened to be a chicken named Buster, who was just not into pecking at all. And he roosted in the very back seat of the school bus, and he spent his days staring out of the window, daydreaming. And when he was sitting there one day, looking out the window, a little scrap of paper from that phone book got pecked away and fluttered down right in front of him. Hmm. He looked down at it, and there were strange symbols printed on it. Now, not only did Buster not know how to read, but he didn't even know what reading was. But he recognized that those strange symbols had a kind of a pattern, and he wanted to learn more. So much to the surprise of all the other chickens, he went over to that phone book, and he pecked himself off another whole page, brought it back to his backseat of the chicken school bus, and he stared and stared and stared at it. Now, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the alignment of the stars. Maybe it was the position of the moon in relationship to the sun and the earth. I don't know. But that day, something amazing happened. And Buster started to read. He got so excited by it that he kept going back to the phone booth, pecking off a new page, bringing it back to his little backseat, reading it from top to bottom. Now, it wasn't very interesting reading because, again, just contained people's names and their phone numbers. But Buster didn't care. He was so excited about reading. The other chickens started to notice that Buster was being even more unusual than usual. And they gathered around and they asked him, Buster, what is going on? And so he showed them how the small squiggly symbols on the page of the phone books actually made some sense. He showed them how to write. Well, all of the chickens got really excited. And again, I don't know if it was the position of the stars or the relationship of the sun, the moon, and the earth, but something happened inside of them too. And they wanted to better themselves. A team of chickens went to the front of the chicken bus and they started to learn everything they could about the mechanics of that broken down machine. They went into the wires and the gizmos and they started oiling things here and tightening things there. And it happened that they connected two wires and the school bus started to rumble. What's going on? All the chickens started flapping around in the air. I think I'm making it go, said the chicken up at the front. His name was Red. 
and Red the chicken said, hold on to your hats, everybody. I think we're going on an adventure. And he sat there in the driver's seat and he held on to the steering wheel with his two little wings and off went the chicken bus. Boom, 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 across Gord Watson's field into the street. Now, they were very lucky that it was kind of late at night and there weren't too many people out on the roads because you can imagine what you would say if you saw a whole school bus full of chickens squawking and flapping and fluttering around driving down the street past you. Where should we go? Reds set up at the front. I know, I know, said Buster. There's a place where there's lots of books. It's so wonderful. It's so fabulous. What's it called? How do I get there? I'll help you, said Buster. This place, it's called the library. And he was able to use the phone book and then a the map in the front of it and the address in there to lead the chickens to the library. Whoa! When they got there, right up at the front of the school bus, screeched it to a halt and all of the chickens came out. They were missing a few feathers because it had been quite a bumpy ride. Come on in said Buster, leaving the charge, and in they went to the library. Pecking heaven, thought the chickens, and they ran around, and they pulled the books off the shelves, and they started pecking at them madly. No, wait, stop, said Buster. Books are for reading. Oh, said the chicken, and they all gathered around while Buster taught them to read. Well, that was fantastic. They ran over the whole library, reading just everything they could from the encyclopedias to the fun picture books in the children's sections to the saucy ladies' magazines, everything they could get their hands on in the whole library. Gosh, it was tiring work, and they read until the wee hours of the morning, and they were all tired, exhausted, and sitting in a big chicken puddle near the front of the library door. I'm hungry said one of the chickens. Me too, said another chicken. I haven't pecked a single thing all night, said another one. I know what to do, said Buster. And he opened up the yellow pages of the phone book in the chicken bus. And he found the pizza parlor with the biggest picture on the page. And he went back into the library and he figured out how to use their telephone. Again, I don't know whether it was the stars or the alignment of the moon, the sun, and the, and, and the earth, but golly, you know, that buster, he was just learning like in leaps and bounds. And they called for a pizza. <laughs> 20 minutes later, the pizza delivery guy zoomed up. They found some money in the till of the library. They paid him and they had a giant pizza feast. Now, they were really grateful that they'd had this big adventure. But they were also a little bit concerned, you know, like wh what would Gord Watson say if he knew that his chickens had spent all night long having a pizza party at the library? We better cover our tracks, they said. So they carefully tied up the library. They put everything back in its place. They put a little IOU in the cash register of, of, the, of the library saying that they would absolutely pay back the money that they'd spent on the pizza. They got back in the chicken bus and they drove all the way home. Now, before going to sleep that night, they took one piece of pizza very carefully up to Gord's Watson's house and they left it just on his doorstep as a, as a little gift for him. And the next morning when Gord Watson woke up, all the chickens were sleeping soundly and peacefully in the chicken bus. And, and he just peeked outside of his door and he nearly tripped over a piece of pizza. I don't like pizza, said Gord Watson. But he picked it up anyway and he took a bite. Huh, he thought, that's not so bad. Now that's only the first night that the chickens took the chicken bus off of Gord Watson's farm. They had many, many more adventures. I wonder, where else did they go? What books did they find in the library the next night? How did those books help them to find new and interesting places? What other strange and wonderful gifts did they leave on Gord Watson's front doorstep? How did he react? Did he ever find out what was happening in that bus on his property with those chickens every single night? 
I don't know. You tell me. Keep telling your stories. We are timeless. We are timeless. We are timeless. We are timeless.